In this course, I have found a number of new books to increase the diversity and representation in my library, but I would like to highlight three of them. The first book that I would like to introduce you to is A Plan for Pops by Heather Smith, illustrated by Brooke Kerrigan. The story features diversity and a wholesome, supportive family, while also dealing with the difficult topic of the permanent disability of a grandparent. This book would be a great addition to any library, not only for the representation it provides for same-sex relationships as well as disabilities, Pops uses both a cane and a wheelchair, but also the way it addresses the challenging topic of a loved one facing serious health issues. Lou loves his grandfathers and enjoys spending time with them on the weekends. He loves participating in their widely varying interests. Granddad likes reading, tinkering, and building, while Pops likes comics, music videos, and telling stories. However, when Pops has a fall, things suddenly change for Lou and his family. How will Pops get through the struggles of his new mobility issues? How will Lou continue to spend time with his beloved grandfathers? Check out A Plan for Pops today and see. The second book that I would like to highlight is Uprooted, a memoir about what happens when your family moves back by Ruth Chan. This is a new publication, which just hit bookshelves in September of 2024. I think that this graphic novel is an important addition to the library because it deals with several things that middle schoolers can relate to, including moving, feeling alone, and struggling to adjust to family changes, as her older brother stays in Canada and her father is often away for work once her parents move back to Hong Kong. It also shows readers another culture through the eyes of someone who is part of it, but feels like an outsider due to the language barrier and differences in customs. One of my favorite things about this book is the way that it approaches language barriers. The author grew up speaking English in Canada with parents who spoke their native language of Cantonese at home, but she still struggled with some of the language after moving back to Hong Kong. To illustrate the language differences and the way her parents mix the two languages at home, the English text is in black, the Cantonese text is in gray, and languages that the author didn't understand are written as Chinese characters. This book can also teach students some history that they may not have otherwise learned. Ruth's own story is interspersed with her father's story, sharing how his family had to flee their home during the Sino-Japanese War. How will Ruth adapt to her new life? What happened to her father's family as they had to flee their home? Check out the uprooted graphic novel to read her story. The third book that I'd like to share is The Mud Angels, How Students Saved the City of Florence, written by Karen M. Greenwald and illustrated by Olga Lee. One of the goals that I sought to fulfill when making my classroom library wish list was to add at least one nonfiction picture book, and this perfectly fits the bill. This book is another new release, having just been published in April of 2024. This book tells the story of how student volunteers from around the world helped to save historical artifacts and books after Florence, Italy was struck by a catastrophic flood in 1966. Not only can this book teach students about a piece of history that may otherwise be forgotten, but it can also show them the power of community and teamwork. Plus, I think that all readers can use a reminder that even in the face of grave circumstances, it's important to band together and support the people around you. I learned from an interview with the author that the majority of research she did to write this story came from primary sources through interviewing people who were present at the time of the flood and who volunteered to help in the preservation efforts. Without this book, this is a story that may have been lost to time, and I think it's important to include non-fiction picture books as part of a collection. You never know which future historian will be inspired by a library book.